like the 806 driver. If you're new to the channel, thanks for subscribing. If you've been with us for a while, welcome back, y'all. Well, it's Saturday. I ain't laying in the bed still. That's where I usually am used to being on a Saturday. Instead, as you can see from the forward motion, we're back here on the dirt road on Four Sixes Ranch down here in Guthrie, Texas. These guys said they're about three weeks behind on this bridge job. We're doing this dirt we're hauling off this bridge and hauling back into this ranch. So I guess we're going to be working Monday through Saturday, I guess. And they might even want to work tomorrow. Hell, I don't know yet. I hadn't heard. But uh, today, it's supposed to be about 113 degrees. I was looking at our extended forecast. We're supposed to have about 15 more days of uh, 100 plus weather and single digit percent chance of uh, single digit percent chances of rain. So in other words, 5 percent, 4 percent, whatever you want to look at. This is gonna be hot and dusty and dry. And uh, today, uh, I put a video out a couple days ago asking for uh, y'all's uh, suggestions on maybe a little uh, Q and A or a little rambling video or whatever. So uh, today, we're gonna try that out. We'll see how it goes. I'll uh, I'll work through this here, and if I don't like it. I'll delete it. We'll try it out on our own or. If it seems okay, maybe I'll put it out. We'll see what happens. But I think uh, I think what we'll start with today, we'll talk about uh, the difference between and your models of emissions and non-emissions trucks. Now, in other words, when I say emissions, every truck has an emission system on it. In other words, that's why it gets rid of your exhaust. Um, when I say an emissions truck though, most people, most people now, think of an emissions truck as a truck with a DPF on it, diesel particulate filter, a regen truck, a truck that has to regen. While this is true, that there is a, a stringent uh, regulation on, a, on an engine manufacturer to, uh, to comply with the law, that is not where emissions regulations came to be, or came came in came into pass. And uh, I'm just gonna go to go through a little timeline of it right now. And this and again, I'm not. Wiki He's loading up a little heavy. It's taking so long to make a round. I'm not Wikipedia, so some of my stuff might be a little skewed, a little off, a little bit. I'm just a good old country boy from. Uh, Texas Panhandle. Some people might not think no knows my ass from a hole in the ground. So you take it for what it's worth though. I was a mechanic though. In the oil field for a long time and had to deal with these motors and these engines and these regulations. So I do know a little bit about it. So the actual first real game changer, you would say, on an engine manufacturer came in 2003. 2003, 2003. That's when the uh, government came out and required engine engine makers to put an EGR system on their trucks. EGR, for those that don't know it, stands for Exhaust Gas Recirculation. What an EGR does is a valve built onto your exhaust. It takes the exhaust gas coming out through your uh, exhaust manifold turbo and it will open up and redirect that exhaust and run it back through your intake on the suction side of your motor. What you say, the intake side, suction side. The motor is a compressor, it's pistons, it sucks air and it pushes air out. I mean, yeah. so really if you think about a motor, it's all it is, it's a big old compressor. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. If you're having problems with the motor, them are the four things you got to know about. Is it sucking? Is it squeezing? Is it banging? Is it blowing? Sucking is your intake, sucking air in, coming through your air cleaners. Squeezing is that air going into your uh, into your head, into your uh, into your cylinder, being squeezed, 
And on a on a on a diesel engine, the fuel and the air mixture, and along with that piston coming up in the uh, piston coming up in the. Uh, excuse me. Kind of watching the road here too. Piston coming up in the uh, in the block in the chamber. When it comes up, it squeezes that fuel and that air, and that cr that creates a lot of heat, and that's what fires a diesel engine. It fires off a of, it fires off a of pressure compression. Uh, whereas a gas motor, it takes a spark to fire it. So on a gas motor, you, same thing. You still have air coming into to the uh, on top of the cylinder. You got air. You got your fuel, unleaded fuel coming in, but unleaded fuel will not not off of compression it's got to have a spark so on a gas car that's why you have spark plugs or ignition systems or whatever uh, fuel injection not fuel injection i'm sorry they both have fuel injection but anyway that's what uh that's what drives a, a internal combustion engine as far as a gasoline spark a spark combustion engine so uh anyway what's that uh I was talking about the EGR. When the exhaust gas recirculates through the uh, through the intake, it's dirty. It's got a lot of soot in it. A lot of soot. So you're reintroducing a lot of soot back into your clean motor, and that's where the problems began. So about from uh, 2003 till 2007, those were pretty much all EGR engines. The only exception to that that I <coughs> excuse me that I know of was Caterpillar. In 2004, late 2003, early 2004, I think they had a motor there called the Bridge Motor, but most of them went over went to the C15 or uh, any of them, C7, C12, C13, C15. They went to Acer Technology. That's when they went to those twin turbos, and uh, the twin turbo basically basically worked just like an EGR, but was a little more efficient at uh, recirculating the gas back through the motor than a regular EGR system is. It was a little cleaner. That's why the cats were a little more popular there in the 03 to 07. Uh, Detroit, that's when they kind of started getting away. There's still some 12.7s made, 12.7 liters made all the way up until 2007, but most of them were them 14 liter Detroits. In other words, you know, it, it robs power too. I mean, that's why everybody had to step, start stepping up to these 15 liter motors, 14, 15 liter motors to get the same amount of power that they could get out of a 12.7 Detroit, a 13 liter cat back in the days. But, uh, but anyway, the uh, 2007, 2008, there was a new mandate come down that's when they had to start putting regen systems on these trucks. And, and in my opinion, a 2008, 2009 truck run as far away from them as you can. Them were the worst motors. Them were the worst motors ever built. They're the worst. The motors were good. The emission system was horrible on them. It was, it was, a, it was the same, uh, it was a SCR, with, which stands for Selective Catalytic Reduction, which in other words, the uh, exhaust gases is catalyzed inside the SCR and lowers the NOx level, the nitri nitric oxide level of the exhaust going out, the, out your exhaust pipe and making it cleaner in the atmosphere. So, uh, the nitrous, uh, the, those year models of trucks, though, the 08s, 09s, did not use depth. They just had a standalone, standalone DPF system. And man, they were horrible. Most people went went along and and were just deleting, deleting those trucks. And uh, 2010 was the next big change. That's when they started uh, requiring urea to be death fluid, diesel exhaust fluid, to be uh, introduced into the system through a doser valve, seventh injector, a lot of them call them, doser valve. Yeah, what it is, does is it sprays right after your turbo in the exhaust, it's 
sprays that diff in there it helps catalyze that exhaust and clean it up going out now those systems were a lot better than the 08s and 09s they still had a lot of problems a lot of issues with the 2010 through 13 models because they were just still trying to figure them all out and that's when uh that's when the gliders um uh, gliders got real popular if you don't know what a glider is a glider is a truck you order a brand new truck and it has everything in it but an engine and a transmission and sometimes no rear ends you pick the rear ends but most time they just come without an engine and a, and a transmission and uh they're from 2008 probably, probably about 2009 when everybody started having hell with those two-year models trucks when the gliders got real popular and uh the most popular setup would be uh, just any truck. I mean, any truck manufacturer made a glider. It didn't matter. Freightliner, Kenworth, Peterbilt, Volvo, Mack. I, I've never seen too many Mack gliders, but, but I'm sure everybody had their glider. Uh, the most popular setup was a 12.7 Detroit. And then, of course, depending on your operation, what kind of transmission. You know, some people like 10s. 10 speeds, some of them like uh, 13 speeds, some of them like 18 speeds, some people like automatics. So just that that spec just depended on your application and what you're going to be using the truck for. So the gliders got really popular, the 127 Detroit, as well as the uh, E Model Cat, the 3406 E Model Cats, and the 6 the 6 NZ Caterpillar was probably the most popular at the time. Now on the newer gliders, being the 6 NZ is prior uh, was built built after 2000. Uh, that motor is not quite as popular anymore. Now people are looking for the uh, the pre 2000 model 127 uh, Detroits, uh, the Cummins M14 pre 2000, and a pre 2000 uh, Caterpillar. Caterpillar made a, I believe it's a 5 k which is why I used to have my old truck. Uh, this truck right here I'm driving right now is a 99 feet built. It's got a 2WS cat in it. Both of them are uh, 15 liter cats. 14.9 liter or 15 liter cats. Big cats. So, um, and the reason why they want them, uh, them pre-2000 model motors and them new, new glider trucks is you know, don't have to comply with, the, comply with the ELD law, the electronic locking device law because the law states if the motor not the truck but the motor was uh was built before the year 2000 it does not have to comply as it exempt from the eld uh mandate so so anyway that's that's getting into a little uh going down a rabbit hole there and getting into a little different area of uh something else we'll talk about sometime is the uh, eld eld shit and all that so uh, what uh where was i okay we're talking about the 10s to the 13s and glider kits so that's when the gliders got really popular uh, now as far as the after about 2013 they really kind of started figuring this system out of how to get the air through get it cleaned up without causing a lot of failures the, the number one thing I noticed when I was working on these trucks is on your death fluid and this is a this is a good tip still today even if you got a 2021 truck do not ever let your death tank get blow up get below a half a tank the reason for that is have you have y'all you truck drivers or anybody that has ever dealt with this I know some of y'all here have pickups or farm equipment or uh Construction equipment that deals with death. Uh, if you spill it on the ground and you watch it dry, it crystallizes. Well, that's what happens inside your death tank going down the road. It gets down, you let it get down to a quarter tank. Well, you got three quarters of your volume in there that's empty, and that stuff is stuck to the inside of that tank and crystallizing on the inside of the tank. What happens next time you go fill it up? When you fill it back up with death, get get your volume up well what happens to that crystallized death on the side sometimes you know it, it will absorb it will dissolve 
whenever it uh, comes in contact with the fresh depth, but a lot of it won't either. And of course, that's heavier. So what's it do? It drops straight down to the bottom of your tank, goes into your pickup tube, it goes right into your depth pump, and starts clogging shit up. And um, I don't know how many uh, depth pumps I've had to replace uh, dosers. Doser, uh, yeah, y'all see me right there. This is a tight ass turn coming in through this uh, gate here. Had a had a guy sitting there watching uh, watching the gate. He is a gate guard, uh, making sure the cows don't get through. Should have showed y'all a while ago. We just came across that dam we were working on in my last video. Uh, they got finished with it. Now we're coming back in here another two miles. We got to build a big ass dam back here. So, uh, so just feel free to listen to me ramble and uh and uh kind of check out this uh four sixes ranch here and yeah, we got to build a big old dam about, about a mile from where i got a dump over here in a second so but anyway uh taking care of these motors you know it's just keeping that depth full man it makes all the difference in the world and i'll tell you a little secret and this didn't come from me and I'm no means liable, and I do not stand behind anything I say. <laughs> uh, but I know on a Mac, a Volvo, Freightliner, if you ever get running down the highway, and you get check engine light, uh, you get derated, and it says uh, death quality, uh, not where it's supposed to be. And you get derated to five miles an hour. If you want to get that damn thing on down the road, you can crawl up underneath the truck. They're on the tail end. Yeah, yeah. They're on the tail end of your uh, transmission. Oh, they already played it. Yes, sir. Man, good quiet now. They're on the tail end of your transmission. Hell yeah. There's a uh, there's a pigtail that goes to your speed sensor. You can unplug that from your speed sensor. Here, you can bring that bitch on down the highway and get it to the repair shop or back to your yard or wherever you want to get it to right. to get it fixed. Your speed armor ain't gonna work, but we got a good old trusty GPS in the truck. Well, you can still tell what you're running anyway, so. Not long, probably. It does. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to be quiet here just for a minute. Pause. I'll see where this. Y'all see that blade hand up there in front of me? I'm fixing to have to dump my load right here. Pulling that belly dump today. He'll usually tell us where he wants wants it spread out at. This road, you can look at it right here. Since we come through that gate back there, uh, it's not very wide. So we're all five. We got five trucks here running right now. We're all running in a group, so we don't have to pass each other on the way out. about where it is. Usually the blade hand stop about where he wants it at. Kick in my power divider so I got good traction. Flip my arm and switch. He said right here. So I dump my load. It's just dumping right now. Just close my doors back up. The other truck right behind me, he's gonna have to wait just for a second for that, that uh, blade operator. He'll smooth that stuff out. He'll just knock it down to where you can drive over it all right. We'll get all five loads dumped, and then he'll, uh, then we'll drive out over it. And while we're gone loading, which it takes about 45 minutes for us to make a turnaround here, uh, he'll be straightening it all up and cleaning it up. We'll get back and we'll dump more. Uh, I think we're, We've hauled 200 of the 2,000 loads we got to haul. We've been hauling about 80 a day, so we're going to be on this for a few weeks. It gives me some time to talk. But anyway, back to the back to the engines. Um, the main thing on them, them new these new motors is just keeping everything clean inside of them and running good. Now they do make some uh, some processes clean these motors now. They got a, a deal that's called a diesel force cleaning. I follow a guy, I listen to a guy on Sirius XM, his name's Kevin Rutherford. 
great show, great show. I don't agree with everything he says, but he's a very smart guy. But if, on uh, on the Road Dog Trucking Channel on uh, Sirius XM on Tuesdays, this guy's show is at, at 10 a.m. Central Time to 1, 1 p.m. Central Time, three hours a day. Well, the, the last two hours of that show from uh, from 11 to 1, they have a deal they call it the Power Hour. And uh, there's some guys from a, a shop up in Pittsburgh called uh, Pittsburgh Power. And these guys have done their due diligence, their research, and they, they pretty much got these emissions motors figured out. So and they got a deal they'll do on them uh, it's called diesel force cleaning and it's it's some kind of detergent and they'll run it through your whole engine and it cleans all that soot that gets uh that gets stacked up in there it gets all nasty but uh they'll do that then they got a there's a there's a new product out and uh this is not a paid advertisement or anything but they call it a uh, max mileage fuel born catalyst and they sell it at pittsburgh power they got it in some truck stops that they uh sell it in too and what what that does is you add it to your fuel and uh, i can't remember the ratio a gallon of the shit costs 200 something bucks it's kind of high but one gallon will treat 3500 gallons of uh of fuel so it goes it goes quite a ways and uh i think Man, I wish I'd done my little research for a guy. I used to know the number two of how much it took per 100 gallons. And it's not very much. It's, it's like, I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to throw a number out there because I'm not sure. But it's very miserable. What, what you can do is one gallon divided by 3,500 gallons. And uh, that'll pretty much give you a ratio right there. So it'll go quite a ways. You know, you run, that stuff will last you a month. Uh, 3,500 gallons times average six gallons per mile. You're looking at about 18,000 miles you can run on a gallon. So you're looking at, you know, three, six, two months you can run off of that. But the shit is awesome. The, the catalyst is an awesome product. What it does is it creates a chemical reaction with your fuel inside of your uh, cylinder head when uh, it takes it takes over a thousand degrees to burn off soot in the combustion chamber. So in other words, you never burn off all your soot in the normal, typical combustion because you don't. It, the combustion chamber only gets up to about 700 degrees. So what it does, it lowers that soot burn off rate in the chamber to about 700 degrees. So in other words, you get a lot cleaner burn of the soot inside of the uh, inside of the chamber combustion chamber than what you would without it in turn it cleans up your exhaust so your EGR is not getting caked up with soot your uh, intake's not getting caked up with soot your uh, DPF filter is lasting yeah, I like that trailer. It has those little five, five times as long I don't know if he's talking to me or not. Hold on a second. What's that, James? I uh, just like those tabs on the back of Christmas trailers where it catches the tarp part. The miner on the sides and every now and then that thing will get a little sideways and get hung up under it. So you gotta walk around and move it before you can roll it back up. I ten four. Um Yeah, well, in, anyway, the catalyst just an awesome product it keeps everything clean coming out the exhaust so you really rarely ever have any problems in the dpf with a knock sensor or a uh and if you do have a problem it's usually just something electrical and a lot easier to fix and uh there's been a little i've been listening to them talk about that stuff for about two years now since about 2018 and uh it's a really awesome product and uh my boss uses it on uh, a couple of their pickups that they still got a dev system on so uh and they seem, and, and it actually increases mileage a little bit. Uh oh, that truck got stuck. Last truck coming in here to unload his load, he, he high centered there. That blade hands, so I'm gonna have to go push him off right quick. 
But uh, awesome product, awesome product. So if you want to go check it out, go to Pittsburgh. I believe it's PittsburghPower.com, or just Google Pittsburgh Power. It'll take you to their uh, their page. They got a store. Um, they also do some uh, custom tuning on these trucks, and they have an awesome tuning uh, department. And they do it right. They don't do it by advancing timing and everything else, and like a lot of these uh, truck stop tuners do. So it's a it's a it's a pretty cool place. Again, not a paid advertisement for them. Um, so, with that being said, uh, that's basically a rundown on emissions motors. Um, everybody makes one except Cat. Cat got out of that game. I say cat guy out of the game, but now they're having to put them in their uh, off-road equipment. You know, their blades, their dozers, their skid steers, their tracos, all that stuff. Uh, they're, they're having to do it now. So I wouldn't be surprised if cats start making an on-highway diesel motor again since they're already having to do it for their equipment. Cat got out of the game uh, probably about 2009. Uh, their little system that they had to come up with there with the DPF, it just wasn't worth the shit. So they got out of the game. And that's when Packard stepped in. They came out with the MX, uh, MX-13, and I believe there's an MX-11 too, the smaller motor, but that's when, uh, and that's, man, and we'll get into this when I talk about trucks, what, what my favorite trucks are. We'll make another video on that in engine, in, engine configuration. <laughs> Anyway, uh, oh yeah, you're doing good. Uh, engine configurations and and truck, you know, diff what different truck manufacturers have. Now, as far as the emissions motors, the only the only company that did something totally different than the DPF and ETR and all that, which they sell out ETR and all that, was International. And don't get me started on the international motor. They came out with a motor called the Max Force engine. It's probably the worst motor ever made next to the Mercedes-Benz motors that came out in Freightliners and Western Stars in the middle 2000s. So, and it's just, you can go online and read horror stories after horror stories on them, uh, on them Max Force motors. All right, Blake Man's got our dirt knocked down. We're about to creep out of here. Y'all see the other trucks coming in? Got their load kicked off, so we're gonna follow this plate man and head back for another load. Well, I've been talking for 27 minutes now. I know I missed a lot and there's a lot more to talk about on this, but we're gonna try this out. And hell, y'all let me know what you think. Uh, it's just a, that was just a generalization. Man, I didn't realize I talked that long already, but for 806 driver, b, &B trucking, everybody uh, have a good weekend, and uh, thanks for watching. Support the channel. Leave us a like. Give us a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, I get like 200 and something views and get like 12 thumbs up, and I uh, also want to give a shout out to Julian one of my big commenters. Um, we're going to get in some, some more maintenance stuff like he was talking about. One of like about 1,700 and probably 94 months. And uh, there's a few other y'all commented on there. Somebody wanted to hear a little more of the CB talk. Yep, and they're all coming right here. Which we got it, got it going right now. Got some CB talk going right now. Do it before and after uh, pitch. Somebody's wanting to know a little bit about getting into trucking, you know, as far as your own authority and all that, and how the wow, yeah, yeah. process goes. So we'll talk about that as well. So um, leave me some comments. What you want to hear? Comment back uh, if you want to get a hold of me directly. Of course, my uh, social media platforms are linked in the description. If you happen to get on here right after I uploaded and I hadn't put all the info in the uh, in the description, it might not be there yet, but it will show back, so check, check back. Sometimes I upload late at night, and I'm tired, and I don't type everything in. I just 
Sometimes it takes a while for a video to upload, so I'll let it be done the same while I'm asleep. While I'm asleep, and uh, then I'll get up in the morning and I'll I'll do, go in there and edit it and type everything in as far as the uh, the description and the, and the links and all that good stuff. So get in there. And, Check us out on our social media platforms. My again, my email is 806driver at gmail.com. It's 806driver at gmail.com. Uh, my name is Chris. Okay, some of y'all didn't know that. My name is Chris. Chris Lockhart. So but thanks for hanging out with us today. And uh let me know if y'all like this. And, and uh Well, I said thanks. Y'all have a good day. Get the shiny side up and then hammer down. 806 driver, we're out.